All right, we are recording. So welcome everyone to today's uh, deep dive. My name is Brittany. I'm a business success coach with Practice Better. And today I am joined with my colleague, Sam. Sam is a customer su support specialist. I'm tripping over my words already. Uh, we're here today to walk you through supporting clients with professional resources. So to kind of run you guys through what we'll be talking about, we're going to be diving into the various ways to share resources with your clients that are going to help set them up for success. So we'll be talking about basically how to discern when to use what style of resource sharing um, options and best practices for each. So we're hoping kind of by the end of the webinar, you'll know the main ways to share resources. Um, we're going to share some creative ways to do so, like creating a resource library in an evergreen program. And like I said, just those best practices when sharing resources to save you time and set uh, your clients up for success. So just a couple housekeeping items before we really dive in today. Um, if you have any questions that come up uh, during the webinar, please feel free to put them in the chat. We will be keeping an eye on that. Um, we might not be able to get to everyone's question today. Um, and if you aren't able to get your question answered, you can always connect with our customer support team. They're always there to help you out. Um, I did mention that a replay will be available. So we are recording this webinar and it will be posted on YouTube um, along with all of our previous deep dives. So a great kind of um, library to go through if you want to brush up on your practice better skills. Um, I also wanted to mention today that um, we always include a feedback survey at the end of all of our deep dives uh, for your feedback to inform us on the direction we take with these deep dives and to thank you today, we will be giving you um, two meal plans courtesy of that clean life, so they will be available for download for anyone that um, uh, fills out that survey at the end of the session today. So for anyone that can't um, stay the entire duration, no worries. We'll be posting um, the link later on in the chat. And then, um, you know, if anyone does stay the duration of the webinar, stay the entire time and it will redirect you right to the survey afterwards. All right, let's get into the topic. So as we begin, I first wanted to kind of define what we mean by resources. So resources are additional content to support your client's journey. They're additional items that help educate, inform, and guide your client towards the goals that they're working on with you. They provide the knowledge and kind of the action steps to take. So maybe some examples of this would be like an informative PDF, infographics, videos, so either ones that you're recording yourself or sourcing, audio files, so you could do something like a podcast or just an audio training, pictures, meal plans, quick guides and how to's, you know, anything that your client needs. So when considering what types of resources to include in your practice, you can ask yourself, what does your client need to be most successful? Uh, we want to emphasize too, as we go along, that there could be other ways to share resources within the Practice Better platform um, other than what we share today, but these are kind of what we're considering the main ways. So we'll be talking about documents, notes, protocols, and programs, um, and sharing how you can incorporate each of these into your practice, and then of course those best practices. So we do have a question for you before we kick off. How many of you, or I guess, how are you guys sharing resources currently with your clients? So let us know in the chats just so we can kind of gauge um, what you're currently doing. Um, and then while you guys are answering that question, Sam and I are actually going to turn off our um, cameras. Sam is going to share his screen so that we can get into the demo. All right, let's see here. So some people are sharing face-to-face, -face, attaching to documents and notes that they share, links to credible sites. Yeah, these are all really great ways. Email, okay. Share the link via messages, awesome. Yeah, so I hope today's webinar gives you plenty of ideas of ways that you can go on to share resources with your clients. So it looks like Sam has his screen shared here. All right, so we are going to get into the demo in just a minute, so you won't see any activity on the screen just yet. I firstly want to mention that resources are a great way of bridging the gap between sessions to ensure your clients still feel supported and taken care of. So there are many ways you can provide resources in a more hands-off way. As we know, it's not always possible to give each and every one of your clients your undivided attention all the time. 
So as we meet with our clients, we'll begin to identify their unique needs and understand, you know, circumstances, those potential barriers to success that you can help them overcome. And we can do this by providing the additional support and information through resources. So let's get into that first way to share resources with the client, which we're going to focus on notes. So notes are a great place to, of course, jot down information before a session, during a session, or recap after a session. And with that in mind, you'll typically pull up your notes when you're conducting a session with the client so that you can jot down those noteworthy items and anything relevant that's coming to mind worth sharing with your clients so that you don't forget it or miss it. So the note feature is created with the idea that there might be certain information that you'd like to share with the client and other that you'd like to keep private. So in a second, Sam will run us through this. So clients are learning so much during sessions. Sharing will help ensure that they don't forget anything important that's mentioned. You know, it's not about like memorizing everything that you're saying in the moment. Um, and it's likely that in your conversation with the client, um, ideas will be brought up. They'll spark ideas of things that you can share with them. So, you know, you can jot that down and come back to it. Uh, there might also be certain circumstances where you want to share with other practitioners. So if you're collaborating on uh, client's care, you may want to share your session notes with them. And we're going to jump into the demo and Sam is going to walk us through best practices of putting together a note and then sharing this resource with a client when doing this. Awesome, thanks for the intro, Britt, that was great. Um, so let's dive in. Let's first talk about uh, notes and note templates. So I'm sure many of you have already been using this feature within Practice Better. Um, but with note templates, you can basically be, have an efficient way to streamline your sharing of resources with clients. So let's first navigate to my practice and note templates, and we'll create one together. Uh, so the note template we will be creating will be called Grow Notes. I have already created the template here, but let me walk you through the process. So you would first select the fast action button in the bottom right here and then do create from template. You'll see there are a few different options that you can select, but for this, we would select grow notes. Once this loads, you'll be able to see that Practice Better has already added some fields into this note because it was a template. And you can customize these however you'd like. All you would need to do is you'll see on the right-hand side here, there are various fields that you can use. Uh, you can use, for example, a yes, no field if you wanna have a quick way to jot down information, or you can use a multiple choice field uh, as well, just to ensure uh, if there's multiple questions that you have to ask a client, this is the best way to do so. Um, you would then go through and create the template. And once you were done, you would select save and save template. Now I've already created this template. So for this, I'm just going to select back. And this would be the template here. So the great thing about this is that you can now reuse this template um, with any clients that you need. So if you have common encounters such as initial consultations, follow-up consultations, uh, I'd say this is one of the biggest time savers with Practice Better. So now let's look at a note that I've created previously for a client using the Grow Note template. So we would first navigate to My Clients and then select the client. Once their, uh, their portal opens, you will select Notes. And this is one that I've already started on. So we'll select Grow Note here. Uh, so the first and most important thing when you're sharing resources with a client is always ensure this Share Notes and Attach Documents with My Clients is enabled. Um, this, this is basically the quickest way to ensure that they're receiving anything that you want them to. You'll also notice along the left-hand side here, uh, there's eyeball icons. This is extremely valuable as it allows you to select which section of a note can be shared with a client. So for example, if you want to share parts of this note, but have private notes for yourself, you can select the eyeball icon so that only the portions of the note that you want visible to a client are available for them. For this note, I've made all the sections visible, but the last to the client. So let's check out some sections now. So under the first section here that I've created, <clears throat> we, you can insert an image uh, into the file. So this is a, a very great way to kind of make your notes, you know, very pretty to look at and, and have quick infographics or charts or anything that you might need to add very quickly. So all you would do is just select the insert image icon and then click this box here. And then you can upload anything that you might need. So for example, for this, I have a saved uh, mental health chart. You would select that, the resource would be available, and then your client would be able to view this in their portal. So let's scroll down to the next section. You'll notice at the bottom here that I have uploaded a video for the client. So with the Practice Better, you can embed videos directly into, into the notes if you'd like. Uh, we do support embedding with both YouTube and Vimeo. So all you would need to do is select Insert Video and paste the link here, and then it would auto-populate just as this video has below. 
One other key feature I'd like to show you about sharing resources with clients is sharing links. So you'll see here at the very bottom, I've created a link for working with mental health. All you would need to do is select the insert link option. You would paste the URL here, and then you could paste the text here. So for example, for this one, I pasted the website here and then made the text working with mental health. So it's not just a, a string of website data, it just shows very neat and organized and is very good for your client to view. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, at the bottom here, I've made this section uh, private. So this is, a, this is a note that only I myself as a practitioner can see. So this allows you, as I mentioned, to go through, make certain sections visible, certain sections invisible so that only you can see it and make notes to yourself of the client uh, that you would like to refer back to later. So those are kind of like the main features inside the note of how you can share the resources. Um, but as well, you'll see at the top here, there are a few tabs that you can select from. So we have documents, protocols, and tasks. With documents, you have the option to attach external documents to the note. So you'll see here that I've already attached a few, but let's attach one together. All you would need to do is select add another here, and then you would select your document in the window that appears. Once you've done it, it will appear with the other documents. And when your client views this note, they'll be able to download those documents. You can also link protocols for things such as recommendations, as well as tasks to remind your clients of things they need to do. So for example, I put meditate tonight here so that when the client gets the note, they'll be notified that they need to do that. Once the note is being completed, you would select sign and you would select save and then sign and save. You'll also have the option that once you've selected this, uh, to send them a notification if you wish. Uh, so for this, I'll skip the notification, but if you select send notification, they'll receive an email uh, or a notification on the Practice Better app that you've shared this resource with them. So for this, I'll select update and share. And then once it's loaded, you'll see in the, uh, in the window here that it has the shared icon. This means that when the client logs into their portal, uh, they'll access the notes section in the same way. They'll come here and they'll be able to view all of these attachments, all the protocols you shared, and any tasks that you've made available to them. Um, another great feature I wanted to show you with notes is the client hub. So let's navigate to Mary's recent activity section here. You'll see this little icon here, uh, open client hub. We're going to select that. And you'll see these are things that you can quickly access in the client record. Uh, it opens a new window for you to view. So for example, if you select the notes tab that we just created, you'll see the grow note is here and all of the information that we shared, including the images, the video, and the links are all available to the client or all available to yourself to view at a glance. Uh, one other great thing about the, um, the recent, the client hub is I'd like to show you is the add quick note feature here. So if you select this, if you're seeing a client and you quickly just want to jot something down for yourself, you would come here, enter your private notes, and then select save. Um, just to note, though, you can't embed videos or images uh, with the quick note option. So you would need to do the, uh, that in the actual note section. And then lastly, what I want to show you with the notes section is the more options aspect. So let's go back to our grow notes. You'll see here the three dots icon. You would click on that, and you'll see a bunch of different options that you can do. So the first is view as PDF, which will give you an idea of how the note will look in a PDF format to a client. As well, you can select print. Uh, if you have a client, for example, that you're seeing in person and you want to give this to them in a physical format, you would just select print and you'd be, it would open it up as a PDF and you could print it there. And another key feature I'd like to show you as well is the fax to option. So with this, you have the option, if you currently have a fax set up in practice better, you do have the option to fax other practitioners, uh, your client's notes as well. So all you need to do is enter the fax information, enter the recipient name, and then this send icon would turn green. You'd be able to send that directly to a practitioner and they'd be able to view any client notes that you have. Um, but one thing I would like to note with this is that when you're faxing a note, uh, all sections are visible of the note, even if you've done the uh, hiding sections like we outlined earlier. So a quick workaround, I usually recommend if you only want the practitioner to see a few aspects of the note, is to select the three dots icon, select duplicate, and then it will create a duplicate of your note. You can then go into that duplicate and delete the sections that you don't want the practitioner to see. And then you would select the fax to option and send that directly to the practitioner. And that would be the, uh, what I want to show you with the notes section. Uh, so I will send it back to Britt to talk about documents. Thanks, Sam. Let's just pause for a couple of questions that came in during your demo. Sure. So we had a couple of questions regarding tasks. So the first question was, can tasks in notes be reoccurring? So can the practitioner set the task to be uh, reoccurring? 
within the notes, yeah, you can you can you can select re recurring tasks within notes and attach those as well. It would be Perfect. in the same section as regular tasks. Yeah, awesome. And then um, we ha also had another question regarding tasks. Can the client mark it as complete once they've completed that task? Absolutely. So when when a client receives a task, they'll receive it um, in their their client uh, portal. Once they've completed the task, they can just go in. Uh, navigate to the tasks, and then they'll be able to select completed, and then you'll receive a notification that they've completed the task. Awesome. And then one other question here that we'll pause for. So um, can you just show quickly how to pull up that client hub and access the quick note one more time? Absolutely. So that's always found um, in the recent activity section of your client. So you would first go to uh, my clients, and then once it loads, you would select the client. And then when this opens up, it's just this little icon right here, the open client hub option. You would just select that. And then you'll select notes. And then you can select add quick note here. Perfect. Um, Margaret had one question here. What is the best way to know what the client sees in their portal? So Margaret, we recommend setting up a test client and that way you can log in as if you're a client and get a, a really good idea as everything that they're seeing on their end. All right. So, you know, as a practitioner, you've got, generally speaking, limited session time to work with the client. So, you know, whether that is a 30 minute follow up, an hour long consultation, whatever you're offering, sometimes the timing is just not enough. We don't always have time to delve into every little detail we'd like to share in the moment. And this is where these additional resources can be extremely helpful in still educating, informing and guiding the client to a great outcome while maintaining your time boundaries in sessions. So jot down those ideas that come to mind um, during your sessions in the note and then add them to the note before delivering to the client. Um, you know, whether it's something like a podcast you want to recommend, maybe it's a book for additional um, learning and reading, maybe they need some more recipes, whatever it is. Um, so you can always mention to the client that they'll be receiving more information when the note is delivered. All right, let's move on to documents. So documents are a good place to share resources back and forth with the client. So the practitioner can upload and share with clients, but the client can also upload for the practitioner. Documents can be preemptively uploaded, so they are there and ready to be shared. And this way, when you take note of the type of information or resource your client could benefit from, it's really just as simple um, as sharing with them. So I personally think this is far more streamlined than emailing and attaching where things get buried in inboxes and you're repeating that work over and over. It's one place for the clients to go rather than sift through emails and losing things. So everything is in one place for them to reference over and over again. So Sam is going to walk us through the documents feature. Awesome. So thanks, Britt. So with, uh, with documents, as Britt mentioned, they're uh, one of the best resources for sharing information with your clients. So let's first discuss how you can upload an external document and then organize it in practice better. So we would first select my practice and then navigate to documents. You'll see in this window that you can view all the documents for both yourself and for your clients, uh, as well as team members if you have them and have enabled the permissions to view each other's documents. I've created a few folders already, However, to create an additional one, you would just select the new folder icon here and name it whatever you'd like. So I'll, I'll name this one stress reduction and then just select create. And then once it's done, you'll see it appear here with your other folders. Now, now that we've created this, uh, we will come back to this folder later, but let's view our meditation folder here. You'll see that I've already uploaded some documents here as well. So to upload another, you would just select the upload option you would select select files, and then you would be able to select the document that you want to upload. So one key feature here that I'd like to show you is you'll see underneath the file sharing option, you have the option to select who you'd like to share it with. You can share it, uh, you can either keep this, this document to yourself so that only you can see it, uh, you can share it with all clients, or you can share it with a specific client. So for this, let's just select a specific client. We'll select Mary, and then select upload. And now you'll see this little uh, shared icon here. This means that when Mary logs into her, her client portal and goes to her document section, she will be able to view this meditation and nature document very quickly and be able to access it just by navigating there. Um, so one thing I want to note too is that clients can upload documents in, the same, in a very similar fashion. 
when they upload a document, they can select which practitioner to upload it to as well. Um, so if you do have a, a team of multiple practitioners, they'll have a checkbox where they can choose who they want to upload it to. Uh, they'll upload it to that folder and then it will be received by that practitioner or all practitioners if they've selected that. Um, one thing I'd like to note about this as well is that most file types uh, are supported by practice betters, such as PDF, uh, Word documents, and JPEGs. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is we do have a file size limit for each individual file of 120 megabytes. So you can only upload files that are smaller than that. Now that we've uh, uploaded a document, let's discuss how to view documents and download them. So th this workflow to know will also be essentially the same for your clients. They would come here, they could select the view option, which will open the document for them to view within this window. They can select the download option if they want to download it to their computer and perhaps if they need to email it to someone or another practitioner or anything along those lines, they can download it to their computer. Uh, and then there's also other options such as editing and deleting the file. And uh, a key feature that we find a lot of our practitioners use is moving documents. So let's move the document that we just uploaded to the folder we created earlier. So you would just select the move option. Then we would navigate to our stress reduction folder we created. We'll uh, select select folder. When we do that, it will be gone. And then you'll see when we navigate to our stress reduction folder, it's here now. Uh, another thing I'd like to show you is uh, a quick way to do this as well. If you would like to share an entire folder with a client, you can do so. So you would just select the manage sharing icon beside the folder, select share with. You'll notice that this is similar to how we shared the, uh, the document itself. Um, so since we shared the last, the, the, the other one with just the client, let's share this folder with all our clients. So you would select all clients. You'll see here the, the notice that all clients with access to the client portal will be able to get this file. So you would select update. And now very similar, you'll see the shared icon beside the meditation folder, which means, as I mentioned, any client can come in and view this. Uh, one other thing, two other things I wanted to point out is if you are part of a team and you have enabled permissions for documents, you can also choose the drop down menu in the top left and navigate between your team members folders and be able to view documents there as well. And the last thing I wanna to mention too is that with the document section, you can integrate directly with Dropbox and Google Drive. So if you have either of those, uh, you'll be able to integrate and then be able to view those files within Practice Better as well. And those would be um, kind of the main key features of the document section and sharing your documents with clients. Awesome, thanks Sam. So yeah, let's just pause for a couple more questions that came up during that demo. So one question here was, will the client get an update when they are sent a document? Yeah, they'll receive a notification when you've shared a document with them. Uh, they'll, they'll receive either an email notification if, uh, if they're enabled to that, or they will receive a notification uh, on their mobile app as well. Yeah, exactly. So when you share a document, they will get a notification letting them know that. You don't have to manually let them know. Um, we also had a question here. So someone was asking, so I can create a library of documents I can pull from for different clients. And yes, you can preemptively upload documents into your folder. You don't automatically have to share them. They can kind of exist in the platform. And then you can choose to share when appropriate with that client, you know, if you feel like they can benefit from that particular resource. Um, so something to kind of keep in mind there. Uh, let's see here. And um, we did have somebody say, uh, let's just take a look. How can you share with two clients without sharing with everyone? So um, maybe Sam, you can share what that process looks like of sharing a document with um, a client and how you can just individually select them. Absolutely. So that would actually be very similar to what we did earlier. Um, so we, you would upload the file as per normal and then you would share files with client. Now, um, unfortunately in my, in my test account here, I only have one client, but all of your clients would appear below here. And then you could just check off which ones you would like to upload it to and then select upload. So it's very similar. It just manually going through and selecting each client, but because I only have one test client in my account at the moment, it's just showing that one client. All right, uh, one last question here before we move on. Is there a way the patient can create folders on their ends to keep documents organized? Um, so clients can upload documents similarly to how Sam shared here, but um, no, I don't believe we have the ability to add folders on the client side. Um, all right, yeah, lots of questions coming in, guys. We don't have time for them all today, but um, like I mentioned at the beginning, customer support is always there to help you. So we will be sharing um, how to connect with them at the end of the session today. Um, but let's quickly move on here. 
So yeah, I just wanted to kind of recap that um, documents in my mind are a great option if you intend for your clients to reference that document over and over again. Um, they're not going to need to waste time digging through their inbox or even the downloads on their computer to find what you've shared. Um, so they can simply return to the document section and take a look at that information. So if that's something maybe like the breathwork exercises uh, like Sam shared, they'll know exactly uh, where to find it. Um, next, we're going to be talking about protocols. So I did see one question come up asking when to use a note, when to use a protocol. It's really going to depend on your own personal workflow and the type of information that you'd like to share with your clients. But for anyone who is kind of new to the concept of protocols, let's quickly define it. So we like to think of it as an action plan to help your client achieve their health goals based on your own personal expertise or methodology. Whereas we like to think of a note as oftentimes a recap or um, you know, additional information from a session. So protocols are a great way of working one-on-one -on -one with a client where you want to create protocol recommendations that are very specific to them. So maybe these recommendations all need to be in conjunction with one another to have the best outcome or result. So kind of as an example of what I mean here is a meal plan on its own will be beneficial, of course, but even more impactful when they receive additional information, say on something like mindful eating practices. Sleep hygiene tips might be great on their own, but even more impactful with additional stress reduction exercises like breath work. So this is a great place to bundle resources. Uh, this is a great place also to, again, house everything in one convenient place that's kind of a running theme and practice better and keep the focus very targeted. So with um, a protocol, you really get to narrow in on what the focus is. You can include additional resources in a variety of formats. So depending on what is the best way to present that information, you have kind of a, a whole range of choosing how you want to share that within the protocol. And protocols are great as they offer plenty of opportunity as a practitioner to streamline your workflow and create them very efficiently. So protocol templates can be made and then later customized to each individual client. Um, Sam is going to walk us through that. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Brett. So um, I think I believe Sarah asked um, about note protocols versus notes and when you would use them. Uh, so to kick off our protocol section, um, we mainly recommend protocols for when you want to share specific recommendations with clients that you can often pull from uh, our database. Uh, so we'll go over that together and we can get an idea of how this differs from, from the notes area. So first things first, let's select the My Practice and protocol templates. You'll notice that protocol templates are very similar to note templates, so they, you can create templates that you can reuse with clients if you have very similar types of encounters with clients. Um, so let's view that one that I've already started. Uh, however, to create one, you would just select the create template icon here, but for now, we'll just select edit because I've already started this one. So you can name your template whatever you'd like. Uh, I've named this one foundational habits. And you can add a focus to outline what your protocol is for. So just I put in to introduce a strong baseline of health. Uh, in the protocol notes section, you can outline what your protocol will cover in more detail, as, as seen here. Um, you can also, uh, vary the exact same as the notes section, you can also insert images, insert videos, uh, and insert links here as well. So you'll see that I've inserted a few images as well as, uh, as a video below. And then uh, you'll see underneath supporting documents, you can also upload uh, PDFs, very similar to the notes section as well. Um, so we've, I've already added three. But just to give you an idea, let's go ahead and select uh, another one to add just so that you can do this on the fly. So I'll add the stress foundational habit to cover the bases. And you'll see all four foundational habits are now uploaded, which means when you share this protocol with the client, they will be able to view it and see it in the exact same way um, that you've outlined. Now let's, uh, let's save this template and we'll exit it. And now we're gonna view setting up a, um, a protocol for a client using this template. So you would navigate to my clients. We'll select Mary again. We'll navigate to a protocol section and we will select create protocol. And then you would always select yourself as a practitioner. And then you'll see this is the template that we had created. You would just go ahead and select that. And then it will populate with all the information that's in your, in your template. As mentioned, if you wanted to, you could add images, links or videos on the fly. So you can add specific resources for this client and they'll be able to do that as well. So underneath, you'll see we have options for uh, food recommendations, supplement recommendations, and lifestyle recommendations that you can create. So let's first select the add a food recommendation. Here you can add specific food suggestions 
and recommend different types of foods that you would like your client to include, exclude, or reduce from their diet. Uh, the nutritionists among you will be more creative than this, but I will just suggest uh, eat more fruit, and then you can just add things such as apples, oranges, and whatever you'd like. Uh, and then you'll see the include, reduce, and exclude option here. So I want to include these. I will then select done. And then if we were to scroll down, you would see the food recommendation that you just created here. With supplement recommendations, you can suggest different supplements you would like the client to include or exclude in the regimen. You can search for supplements in our built-in database. You'll see here, uh, we do have a database you can use. We also do support integration with Full, Fullscript and Wellevate. Uh, so if you were to integrate those, they would appear uh, here and you would be able to use supplements from their database as well. But let's use our built-in one and search for vitamin C. And when, once we go ahead and select search, you'll see some different options here. So you can go through and there's all sorts of different options. We'll just select the top one here. You can also edit things like the serving. So I'll do just one serving for now. And then you can also uh, update things like frequency and duration. So I want the, uh, Mary to have it with breakfast uh, for four weeks. And then once that is done, you can also add like related health conditions or just additional information for yourself to, to kind of keep track of that. And then once that's completed, you would select done. And then you'll now see their lifestyle record, or sorry, their supplement recommendation appear here too. And then the last thing we wanna discuss is lifestyle recommendations. So with this, you can share different ways that your clients can make changes to the lifestyle, such as exercise or sleep. Uh, you can add custom ones, so your own personal ones, or you can use curated ones that are already available. So for this, let's go ahead and select a curated one. So I'm gonna select stress, and you'll see there's all sorts of different options here that you can share with your client. So I'm going to select meditate, and then once done, it will pre-populate with, uh, with just some general information. And like I said, you can customize this however you'd like to share with your client. And then once completed, you'll select done. And then that will also appear. So you'll see now we have our food recommendation, our supplement recommendation, our lifestyle recommendation, as well as our supporting documents here. So it really allows you to just kind of share as much as you need uh, with your client. And it can be very customizable no matter what type of practitioner you are. You can really kind of customize a section to... Uh, to best suit you and to make sure that your clients are getting the resources that you want them to. Uh, so now that we've done and we have everything uh, uploaded, we'll just go to the top here and then we will select save and publish. Once we select that, it's similar to notes where you can uh, have the option to send them a confirmation. Uh, it will work the same as other notifications where your client will receive an email or an, a, a, a notification on their phone, just saying that uh, you have a protocol ready for them. They can come in, view it and be able to see uh, those things at a glance. And then we would select publish. And once we've done that, once this loads, we should see it uh, created here. So here's the one that we have created and you can come back and preview it at any time. Perfect, that looks awesome, Sam. All right, yeah, so protocols kind of like I mentioned can almost be thought of as a bundling of resources in a variety of formats that are intentionally curated in a way that will best serve your client. So bundled curated resources to serve the specific client. Uh, let's quickly pause for a couple more questions. Um, is this for group or individual? So um, protocols are typically used for the individual. Um, if you wanted to use protocols on more of a group basis, what you would do is create it as a protocol template and then simply assign it to any kind of client that you wanted as a part of that group. Um, but we'll also be discussing programs which are typically more inclined for um, serving groups um, rather than individuals. All right, let's see here if there's any more questions. Is there a way to make up a recipe on here? So no, we don't have a way of meal planning or providing recipes kind of um, any kind of integration unless you're going to manually write them out or um, you could attach it as a PDF. So just as a reminder for anyone who didn't catch it at the very beginning, um, we will be giving away two meal plans courtesy of That Clean Life um, to anyone that completes the feedback survey at the end of the webinar. So that's a really great example of getting your hands on a PDF meal plan that you can simply attach to a protocol or even a note or program anywhere that you um, want to put it. Uh, you'll notice that of course, there's some overlap of features from notes to protocols to programs, but that's because we want you to be able to come up with your own workflow and work in whatever way serves you and your clients the best. 
All right, let's go on to secure chat. So this is just more of a brief mention that we wanted to share with you today, but messaging directly one-on-one, -on -one, you can share quick information with a client and attach resources directly to the chat box. So Sam is going to quickly walk us through that. Awesome. So yeah, messaging, I would say out of all of the resources we've talked about so far, um, messaging is the quickest way to send any information that you want to a client. So perhaps if you've, if you're talking to a client in a, uh, virtual session that you're, uh, video chat that you're having with them or over the phone, uh, this is the kind of the quickest option where you can just quickly send them like, um, external PDF or any sort of resource that you'd like. So all you would do is you'll always see the messenger window open in the uh, bottom right here. You would just select, uh, select that, and then you would select expand and your chat window will open up with all of your clients that you've spoken with. Uh, you would just select your client, and then you'll notice here when um, when you're chatting with the client, there will be an option to attach file just to the left side here. So all you would do is just select select this button, and then let's share the uh, meditation in nature one that we referenced earlier. You would just double click that, you would select send, and then of course you could add text to it if you want to explain what it's about to the client. Uh, and then on the client's end in their, in their messenger portal, they'll receive a quick notification um, that you've shared this with them. They can then come in and access it and, uh, and download the, the document that you've shared. I will note that although this is the, the quickest way to share resources with the client, um, depending on the type of resource and how often you want the client to go back to it, uh, or just their general ease of pulling up the resource, you may just want to share it directly in their My Documents section that we had outlined earlier. And that would be the, the kind of the, the messenger, as I mentioned, because of its quickness, um, it's not the most robust for document sharing, but that's kind of like the main element of it. Um, so that would be the main features of it. Awesome. Yeah, we had a quick question. So will the document shared in chat also show up in their documents? Um, no. So if you want it to be something that you, um, they can easily know where it's at and reference again, um, then it might be best to just simply upload it in the documents folder um, or section rather, and let the client know that it, it's going to be there. Um, all right. Okay, so um, I just also wanted to quickly mention before we move on from chat that similar, similar to what we're showing you with the practitioner sharing resources, the client can also use the chat to share back with the practitioner. So it would look very much the same that they can go in and attach, you know, different file types directly from their computer into the text box. So if they if they're, um, have anything that comes up in conversation with you, uh, that's a quick and easy place for them to pass it over to you. Okay, now we have, this is um, a really exciting demo. We're going to next get into programs and we wanted to share with you a creative way of using our evergreen program feature today. Um, so this is simply one way to use the programs. Um, we're sharing with you a resource library idea, but know that the sky is really the limit on how you choose to use the programs feature. So this is a way our programs in general are a way to um, automate resources shared with a client. So this can be more of a hands off approach to supporting a client through resources. They can be dripped or kind of released all at once to the client. So it's an opportunity to curate and theme the resources you are sharing to support a specific issue. And you can run multiple people through the program at once. So really good opportunity for scalability for your business and maybe even more of a passive way to support clients and bring in income once they are enrolled. Uh, similar to protocols, think of programs as a place to curate a variety of resources in different formats that work harmoniously together toward a common goal. So this is just, again, one way of using programs that we're sharing with you today, but we wanted to kind of highlight a creative way to do so. All right, Sam is going to share with you our resource library. Awesome. Thanks, Britt. So yeah, as Britt mentioned, you can structure um, these resource libraries however you'd like, They're depending on what type of practitioner you are, what type of resources you want to share. It's very highly customizable. Um, so to, to set this up, let's first navigate to my practice and then my programs. So you'll see here that I've created a, um, a meditation library because we've kind of discussed those resources uh, a few times today. So what I want to show you first are the key settings that we we'll want to have enabled uh, for this to work best as a resource library. Um, because most of the time, uh, I imagine most of you would use uh, our program section for you know module-based content and things like that. This isn't often um, something that people have considered to do. So there will be some key settings that we'll want to enable for this. So you just select edit beside your meditation library. 
Uh, as normal, you can set the, the title, the tagline, as well as just give a description um, so that your clients are aware of what it's for. Uh, I always recommend setting the maximum duration of 24 months so you have the most amount of time to access it. Um, and then if we scroll down, you'll see here underneath payment options, this, this will be similar to many of you setting up services, packages, works the exact same way. Um, you, can, you can charge a fee for this if you have like a very in-depth resource program and you want to add it as like another stream of income, you can set a fee for it. Uh, I've made this a free resource so that basically any client who is enrolled with me can access it without having to pay. So I've just put the fee as, um, as free. And then another feature too, is you can select which clients um, you want to be able, or sorry, how you want clients to be able to register. Um, so you can either select allow my clients to register for this program, if you want any of your clients just to be able to sign up and access it. Or you can also select only I can register clients for this program, meaning that you will have to be the one to register. So if you want to keep this as like more of an exclusive thing, for example, you can choose which clients to give this to, and then send them the invite to, um, to the program. Uh, one other thing I'd like to show you under the advanced options for our settings is the group chat option. I'm sure some of you use this already with your programs. Um, but because this is a unique setup, I think this is a great option to enable should you want to create a resource library. Basically with this, uh, clients can share resources with one another too. So if they can't come across something that they have found very beneficial to them, anything that they've uh, really has really worked for them and they want to share it with other clients, they can absolutely do so um, just by letting them know in the group chat. And it's a really great way for client interaction and just kind of like fostering a bit of a community among your clients. Uh, so those are the key features that you'll want to have enabled. Uh, you can customize everything else however you'd like, though. Um, once done, you'll select Save Changes, and then we'll take it to take us to our program window. So as I mentioned earlier, because we've been doing uh, some meditation themed stuff, uh, I created the meditation resource library. Uh, so I've structured this basically how it works, so that each module houses a different aspect of medication or meditation. You'll see, for example, there's ones for meditation in nature, EFT tapping spirituality and meditation um, and you can add as many modules as, as you'd like to this so how i've done it is each module houses a um, uh, some resources as well as attached documents that clients can quickly come in view and get more information about so for example let's select this first one here um, the meditation and nature module we just go ahead and select edit on that so uh, you can uh, similar to the, your how your modules work now you can do the module name you can give it a description. Uh, you always, it's always best to have allow registered clients to access content at any time. That way you can, they can just come in and view it at their own pace. Um, with most resource libraries, that seems to be the general flow of how it works with clients. So that's usually a good option to select. Um, and then from here, let's go ahead and view the content of the module. So you'll see, uh, this is just kind of like uh, one that I've created, um, but I've added some, some various sections here with videos. So I'll go through them a bit more slowly. So you can add uh, similar to the notes protocols, most areas of practice better. You can insert images, videos, or links for quick resources with, uh, with clients. So I've uploaded, for example, um, an image here uh, that they can view as well as some a YouTube video that they would be clicked on and be able to access. Um, and then if we'll scroll down, you'll see some more images and, uh, and, and tabs that you can use to customize however you'd like. So this part wouldn't be too dissimilar to standing up, setting up a standard program where you have them come in and access uh, the information. Um, but what you can do uh, as well as just attach documents. So the meditation and nature one that I mentioned earlier, uh, you can attach as many documents as you like. So that way your clients can basically, if they know they have some resources they need to access for meditation and document and they want more resources, they would just come to the program, uh, come here and be able to download the, uh, the PDFs that you share with them. And then you can attach any more any more things by selecting add content. Uh, you can attach documents, but with this, uh, you can also attach videos and images. So if you, um, so as I mentioned earlier, we support uh, embedding with YouTube and Vimeo, but we also do, if you wanna share, like let's say you have a Loom video or uh, some other external resource, you can just choose to attach that to the document section here. And then your client can come and download any personal videos like that, that they can refer back to later. Um, so that's kind of like a, a common setup we see with, uh, resource libraries. One thing I would like to note, though, is you don't have to have any module content if you don't want. You can literally just have this be uh, a resource where clients come and download documents. So for example, in the second module, uh, Breathwork here, I won't include any module content. I'll just select Edit, and I will leave it blank. And right now, there's nothing here. So for example, if I were just to upload a document, and I'll upload the, uh, the Breathwork PDF we've talked about, and select Save Changes, 
And then when a client uh, comes to this module and views it, they'll literally just see the document to download. So this, for example, if you if you just want to have if if you like prefer, for example, creating your own PDFs and having them accessible outside of Practice Better, this would be a great way where you could come in and structure it and have all sorts of different types of documents for your clients to download and access um, outside of Practice Better. So that would be um, one way you could do it. Uh, we for this workflow, it, we usually do recommend using the share document section that we outlined earlier. It's just a bit more of a simpler workflow. But if you want to have this in a, in um, a resource library set up, this would be a great way to do it. And then another thing I want to share is you can select our uh, share link option here. When you select share link, you can select uh, share a registration link that your clients can come and view. So for example, if you want to entice new clients to, uh, to join your program and you offer them like the, the option to view your free resource library as a means of like getting them hooked or just showing that you have all sorts of resources that might meet th their needs, you can do the share link option, uh, share that directly, and then uh, people will be able to come in and access it. And then the last feature I want to discuss about this is if we navigate back to the main um, program area is if you were to navigate to the meditation library and select the three dots icon, you can share this uh, resource library with other practitioners. So if you are a solo practitioner, for example, but you know of other people in your field that you uh, want to share resources with or have them share resources with you, you can just come here, select the three dots icon, uh, select manage sharing, and then select share access code. And then you would you would copy this access code and then you would paste it to your client or to your practitioner. And then they would be able to, uh, another practitioner would be able to go into the programs, download this and be able to access your resource library. So it's a great way of kind of collaborating uh, among other practitioners in your field and then get, help, get, help them give you suggestions or you can suggest things to them that they could be doing better or it's just a great kind of collaborative uh, way of handling that. So that's kind of like the main way that we find that people use the um, the resource library with uh, with programs. However, like I said, this really is customizable however you'd like. So uh, I would recommend just if you have some free time, just kind of playing around with the the content, the module, and just see uh, if there's a great way that you can structure this for your own program. Yeah, like Sam, um, I mentioned at the beginning, programs are amazing because you can really do so much with them. And the resource library is just like a, a way that we're, we're working within the programs feature. Um, but you can create a program that's more, you know, a group feature focus where all of the content kind of grows upon itself and you're starting with some basic concepts and then growing on to some more um, in-depth ones to help clients achieve certain health outcomes. Um, so awesome potential there to do really creative things with your clients and work in groups. Um, let's just pause for a couple of questions before um, we wrap that up. I do want to mention here that in the chat, I shared the link to our feedback survey. As we are nearing the hour, if you can't stay the entire duration, um, that feedback survey is available for you. Um, for completion of the survey, um, courtesy of that clean life, we have two meal plans to share with you. So one is a one pan meal uh, meal plan. That's a bit of a tongue twister. And the other is a plant-based version of it. So um, again, I'll just quickly put that in the chat, um, anyone who is staying the duration of the full hour, you'll be redirected at the end of this. Um, and we have had a couple questions also about getting a replay. Yes, you'll definitely be getting a replay. If you've registered, you'll get one to your inbox and all of our old um, previous deep dives are housed on YouTube. So be sure to check all of, all of those as well. All right, um, let's see here, any questions? I'm just scrolling back up here. Is there a specific size for images in programs? So Sam, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe for file types that you're uploading, um, you'll want to stick to 120 megabytes or below. Is that correct? That would be correct. So with um, with the the file sizes, it would be the same as the um, the images and the videos in like the notes section, for example. Um, one thing you can always do is is just there, there's like external file services where you can sometimes just make your like file compression services where you can make your files smaller. So, for example, if you were if you worked on like a great video and it's really long and happens to be over 120 megabytes, uh, you can always just search online for file compression and be able to make your file smaller so you'll still be able to um, to upload it. And then I did see um, Brett a good question from Lauren here about uh, does a collaborator need to be a, a practice better member too? So this was for the managed sharing. Uh, option that I discussed. So yes, in that case, if you want to 
um, share your your program with a another user. It, they do have to be a Practice Better user because it's only like these programs are only able to be structured within Practice Better. Yeah, that's great. And if you are collaborating with other practitioners that are not within the Practice Better platform, um, that's where maybe the facts opportunity um, will come in very handy for you, or you can just kind of export certain things as PDFs and share with them outside of the platform. But um, always nice to keep everything right within the platform. Awesome. Um, I did see one last question that I want to quickly address before we move on here. Um, someone was asking in regards to the platform, um, the different sections for content in the modules, the purpose and benefit of those. And that would really just be to kind of organize the different type of information that you're sharing. So, you know, if you're um, like our example in protocol where that we were talking about basics of exercise and nutrition, it's nice to be able to break those things up. So as you're creating the content, it's a little bit more organized for you. So I hope that helps answer that question. All right. Okay, so yeah, I love this unique way of using the evergreen program feature. Um, Sam mentioned he set this demo example up as a free offering for existing clients, which is a fantastic idea. But I also wanted to share that you could also introduce something like this as a membership program where clients have ongoing access to the resources you provide for say like a monthly recurring fee. So again, you can get really creative with how you offer your resources. We are nearing kind of the end of our demo. So if anybody has any kind of last second questions while we still have um, Sam's screen up, please let us know. Yeah, lots of chat happening about um, the resources on our YouTube channel. There are a ton if you're kind of newer to practice better and you're just getting kind of set up for the first time or learning what to do, um, lots of resources there for sure. Okay, can we address the difference between a package and a program? So a package is typically a bundle um, of services. So, you know, if you want to see um, your client for a minimum of six months and you wanna have two sessions a month, um, that's what you're doing to kind of put together a package. A program is more so um, running your client through different content and um, an action plan to get them to their goals. So one is more so talking about the number of sessions, um, and different services that you offer and bundling those together. The other is actual kind of content for your clients. All right, so Sam, let's turn our cameras back on so that we can say goodbye to everyone and wrap up. Absolutely. All right, everyone. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're always so excited to connect with you and share lots of different ways to use the Practice Better platform. Um, there was lots of questions today. So if we weren't able to answer um, a question that you had, um, Sam, you can't turn your camera on, can you? No, I just, I was going to say, so sorry, guys, I would love to turn my camera back on, but uh, there's a weird Let me, permission I'll make you. A, I'll make you the host quickly so you can say goodbye. Um, for those of you who didn't get your question answered, please feel free to connect with our customer support team. So I am going to put their um, email in the chat box there so you can um, take note of that. Also at the bottom of every um, web page in Practice Better, there is the report and issue button. So you can click that and it will bring you access to the customer support team. Um, Again, we have a replay that will be going out to everyone. So you can expect that to come through your inbox. If you don't see that for whatever reason, um, it will also go up on YouTube. Um, so it's there along with a lot of other great resources and past deep dives. So you can um, learn lots of tricks and optimization practices for the platform. Um, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the survey one last time. We're really excited that that Clean Life was generous to provide us with a couple of meal plans to share with you guys. So as a thank you for completing that feedback survey um, that you'll be redirected to, it just takes a minute. Uh, we will be providing you those two meal plans and you can use those PDFs and attach them to any of the different resources, uh, ways of sharing resources that we've shared today. So. Um, thank you guys um, thank you. for tuning in, for those who are catching us live or watching the replay, and we will see you later. Um, where are the meal plans after the survey? Most likely they'll be emailed out to you, um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that they get to everyone. We are working on that. All right. Thanks, everyone. We're going Thanks to so say goodbye. See you later. Bye, guys.